Hey guys, Kyle Cordiana here. This is going to be my FLW Tour recap of the final stop of the 2018 FLW Tour season. It was on Lake St. Clair uh, out of Metro Park in Detroit, Michigan. And uh, it's phenomenal smallmouth fishery. There's largemouth there that you can target and they bite pretty good if you want to catch them. But you're just not even going to... You don't have a shot at doing any good catching largemouth there. Um, based on what I saw, There's obviously they were catching over 25, even a couple of 26 pound bags of smallmouth. So you need to target smallmouth when you go in there, in my opinion. Good job, Dylan Hayes and Chad Grigsby on setting records for some of the heaviest stringers ever bought in. That's pretty cool. And, and uh, anyway, I'm just excited about uh, uh, Southern Boy, you know, really stomping them up there. You know, Dylan Hayes did a real good job representing us Southern Boys. But um, this is gonna be what I did. This is gonna be what I used, the baits and, and techniques I figured out. I did some little different things, you know, trying to be experimental with uh, some Jean LaRue baits, and uh, I got them to bite it pretty good. The, really, there was only two things that were working good for me, and it was a drop shot, and uh, turned out to be a spy bait was a pretty good deal. I couldn't get on that two bite. There was a two bite to be had. Um, the tournament was pretty much won out deeper, you know, like 20 foot isolated patches of uh, like, it's a cabbage grass. It's kind of it's kind of small and folded over and I mean it really does look like a cabbage or almost like a head of lettuce. It's, it's, uh, it wasn't very high off the bottom and then there was a lot of other types of vegetation too but uh, if you could find that good grass in 20 foot of water that was isolated in clumps, um, it seems like that was what was working really well. I, of course I never did find any of that real good stuff uh, which is why I didn't do the greatest. But this is what I was using. This is what worked for me. If you want to go out and have a good time, I promise you'll catch fish doing this. So I'm going to start off talking by the drop shot because that's what I use the most. Um, I like the heavy drop shot weight for that. Lake St. Clair has a lot of current um, and it has a lot of wind. So it has a wind current, but it also has a natural current uh, that occurs from the flow of the St. Clair River and the Detroit River down to uh, from Lake Huron down through St. Clair into Lake Erie. So you've got two different currents that you've got to anticipate when you're when you're fishing down there. Um, so keep that in mind. A lot of times the wind current will combat with the current of the Detroit River or the natural lake current and you kind of end up getting this stalemate but you get like a wash of waves. Um, waves are real dangerous there. Be real careful. But uh, I like the heavier weight. So this is like, this is a half ounce. This is the long cylindrical type weight. This is by Opticast. This is their GT Tungsten um, weight but it's a half ounce weight. Um, works really good in grass, the long cylindrical weight that seems to get hung up in grass more than the big round weights. And I think it was a big round weight too because I had some rock area. But I like throwing like a half ounce or a three eighths ounce, something pretty heavy that kept me on the bottom, kept me in contact with the bottom because that seemed like the fish were relating to the bottom more than anything. I had an octopus style hook. This is a number two drop shot. I think I threw a few different kinds. I had some VMC hooks and I had some trocar hooks. But it's octopus hook, it's offset. I don't know if you see the way the shank of that's offset. Um, mentally, for me, I like having that hook off the side. It feels like it's just it's already ready to reach out there and grab them. This is a biffle bug. It's a biffle bug junior, uh, you know, three and a half inch or 3.75 inch in length. Um, and what I've done here is I've trimmed everything down off the sides. If you watch the practice videos, you saw me do it. But basically, you know, it starts out looking like this. And you take it and you trim all the sides off and you end up something like that. It's a lot more streamlined profile, looks a lot more like a goby. Um, I think it kind of looks like a leech too and I don't, you know, I know they eat leeches up there so. Um, this color here was a color that my dad actually started whooping up on me behind the back of the boat. And uh, it, it's, the name of it is Watermelon Goldfish. It's got a lot more transparency to it than kind of your standard watermelon. Um, that little bit lighter color was getting him a lot of bites over something darker in a particular region of the lake. There was other areas of the lake um, where the darker color worked better. But that was one color that worked really well. And I've got a few other colors here that were working really well for me. So this is the Tennessee Shad color. It's real bright and flashy on one side, real natural um, color on the other. I caught some fish on this in practice, but the other thing I did with this is is I'd take it from that step, I'd trim the sides up, you know, to where it looked like that. And then I'd cut that right down the middle, right? And then you end up something that looks like this. It's just a much smaller, um, almost replicates like a dream shot kind of profile, 
but you can take these biffle bugs and, and modify them. And so if I wanted to go something really small in profile, I was able to do that and catch some fish doing that. So it's a neat little trick to try. So that's a Tennessee shad color. Um, caught them on again, the watermelon goldfish. And then this was a color that to me mimicked the goby really well. Um, they've got this one, which is a shimmering goby. So it's got a little bit of a shimmer to it, a little bit natural, and it's got a little bit of purple and black fleck in it. So it looks really good and mimics gobies a lot. I trimmed that down and caught them on that. And then this dark watermelon pepper uh, with pumpkin purple. It's a long name, but it's dark watermelon pepper, pumpkin purple. I don't know if you can see the colors in it. It's got a little bit of purple in it. It's pretty dark and natural looking, but they really like that too uh, when I wanted a darker color. And so let's see, I've covered, yeah, those are all the colors um, that I caught on the biffle bug. The other thing that I used on a drop shot that worked really well, um, some guys were catching them on like swim baits, something with a paddling tail. And so Gene LaRue has a bait called a rally grub. And again, same thing. I've got this cylindrical half ounce GT tungsten weight by Opticast. So this is a rally grub, and this is a three and a half inch bait as well. This is smoke pepper purple. Um, I was, a lot of research down there, they like these smoke colors with purple and black in it. So Jean LaRue has this awesome rally grub. Again, I had this offset shank hook, and you just drag that on that bottom, this rally grub, it has that little boot tail on the end. Um, kind of, Jean LaRue's kind of famous for the tattletale kind of look. It doesn't take any movement at all, and that thing looks like it's down there swimming pretty good. And man, they really liked that bait a lot. So that was a good uh, one-two punch for me on the drop shot. If I wanted something a little bit more minnow acting, because, um, you know, those fish there, they eat on gobies, but there's also uh, spot-tailed shiners or something like emerald shiners and spot-tailed minnows. And so, so there's different kinds of forage. And so when you're practicing, you know, and you get an area where you're catching fish, you kind of wanted to go through some of these different baits that replicated some of the forage that was in the water. Uh, and that would help tell you what they liked best and it was probably what they were keying on in that area So you wanted to go you wanted a nice arsenal of baits to go through um, To see which one uh, They were targeting in that area because it seemed to make a difference like I said there was that one day dad really put the whooping on me and my guess is that uh, It was the color and the forge that he was matching best um, The drop shot rods I was using of course I use all Kistler rods. This is a helium 3 this is a seven foot spinning helium three. This is a medium action. It's got an extra fast tip. Um, this is such a comfortable rod in my hand. Um, it fought the fish really well. I don't think I lost hardly any fish at all on any of my setups in this tournament. I had one break a bait, but uh, I was throwing, um, this is an ardent reel. This is the wire 2000 series. And I was throwing it on 10 pound braid, uh, super slick eight braid. And I threw everything on eight pound and some 10 pound leaders. I found that I could get away with uh, a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader, Seaguar and Vizex. Um, I just felt a little bit safer about being, you know, kind of strong with those fish. The other reel that I've just started using from Martin that I really like is the Bolt. Again, it's a 2000 series Bolt and Man, it performed really well. I was really impressed with it. It's not a higher end reel. It's pretty cheap and reasonable uh, on price, but it handled really well. Drag worked great, no complaints at all. You know, your gear's gonna get wet anytime you're fishing, but it's really gonna get wet when you're in an area where your uh, big waves and waves are coming over the bow and your gear's getting wet. So, you know, it. I put it through the reamer, you know, and it never did get rough on me or nothing like that, which happens a lot of times when your gear gets wet. The other spinning rod that I use is a Kistler KLX. This one's a little bit lighter action. This is another seven foot rod, but this is a medium light. Medium light, and the KLX series has more of a moderate fast tip as opposed to Helium 3 has an extra fast tip. Because this is a medium light, um, a lot more of the rod flexes. Um, you've got just a little bit more play in that. And so I threw that on a drop shot as well. Both of them worked great. Uh, really just a preference. The the Helium 3 has a little bit more strength to it than this KLX medium light, and that's the difference between the medium and the medium light. Uh, I threw that exact same rod on the other bait that worked good for me, which was a spy bait. Right? So all my drop shot rods, 10 pound braid, tipped with eight or 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. 
Um, again, the braid was a Super Slick 8, and the fluorocarbon I always use Seaguard and Viz X. So this is another seven foot medium light KLX. I've got another 2000 series reel on it. This is all eight pound fluorocarbon. There's no braid on this, um, just preference. I like having all fluorocarbon on certain things when I'm throwing like a hair jig or something like this where I don't want to feel the bite really, really good. I don't want it to be real sensitive, especially on this little treble hook bait. So this is a bait sack by Cal Coast. Anything with treble hooks in it, you guys, you need them. It just pulls right out, slips right in, pulls right out, clips to your rod. Never get hooks on anything. So user friendly. So I didn't fish with them a bunch in practice, but in the tournament on day one, if you watch my day one video, I wreck them on this thing. I catch like 17 pounds and 45 minutes on it. And um, then they broke it. So of course, then I go buy a bunch more and then on day two, they don't eat it. But um, they did for other people. If you watch Chad Grigsby, he won the tournament on a on a spy bait of some sort. But this is a yellow perch color. So one of the other main things they eat in that, besides the smaller fours that we talked about earlier with the goby and the shiners and the minnows, is yellow perch. They get quite a bit bigger, but there's a lot of yellow perch and those bigger smallmouth eat those yellow perch for sure. So this is a yellow perch looking bait. And this is the 80 g -Fix. It's just a, uh, by Duo Realis. And it's just a spy bait, guys. If you've never seen one of these before, they got little blades on the front and they got little blades on the back. And the presentation for this is very unique. It's not like anything else you've thrown before. So you throw it out there, you let it sink to the bottom, and you reel it extremely slow. The second you think you're working it too slow, you're not working it slow enough, but your goal is to be ticking those isolated grass patches, or even if you've got some rock down there, you really wanna let that bait tick something, and you know, I kinda twitched it up off of it, and then just kept the retrieve going until I ticked it again, but you constantly wanted to be making contact with the grass or the bottom structure. And when they eat that, sometimes it's a bump, sometimes it just loads up, you just ease into them, it's got these little treble looks on it, and you just gotta let them play themselves out. You can't horse these smallmouth on anything, uh, any bait, to be honest. Uh, Maybe the tube. If you could get them on that big isolated single hook on the tube with bait caster, you might get horse them a little bit, but they're tough and they're strong. And uh, anyway, so we had 18 pounds, five ounces on day one. We had just shy 18 pounds on day two, um, but I lost a couple of fish. First fish, first couple of fish I've lost, which is kind of sickening. Um, we finished 78th in the event, out of the money by, well, based on what I, without the penalty, it would have been about 12 ounces out of the money. And I didn't look at how many points it was, but I finished 54th and they took 43 spots to the Wood Cup. So I didn't make it. And the tour season's over. We got one more coast event coming up on Fort Gibson in October. Uh, but one of the other things that I think was real important that I wanna show you guys, if you go up to the Great Lakes, you gotta have a butt seat, some kind of seat to lean against. Those waves are gnarly. I got seasick, so if you get seasick, be ready for that, because it's just like an ocean. So you're gonna need a butt seat. And the other things you're gonna need are these power pole paddles. Come check these guys out, man. I'm sure you've seen them. I'm gonna do my best to show you guys and hold this camera. But so it's a real quick attachment. It's just a couple bolts that you screw onto the back of your power poles. But this is a paddle and there's a release mechanism right here. See if you can see it. It's just a two pin system, right? The one pin stays on there permanently. This one picks up and when you pick it up, like I just did there, you can pivot this thing in and out wherever you want it, right? And then you get it where you want it, you lock it back into place. So now when I deploy that power pole there, and I deploy it out at the elbow, it just drags through the water and acts like a windsock. And you got one on each side. You can change the direction of these to slow your drag speed. You can even help it, use it to help you position your boat. And guys, it's phenomenal. We could be going five mile an hour in the current. I could put those down and I'm going down like a mile and a half an hour. So it dramatically slows you down, lets you cover the water better, present your bait a little bit more naturally through the grass like you want to. Really important stuff. So. Uh, thank you guys for watching all year. I'm going to get into some more fun videos. I'm going to try to do uh, some crappie series stuff. So be look forward to that. Um, targeting crappie in the summer in Oklahoma. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching all year. And hopefully I round up the sponsors and I get to do it again next year. I'm qualified. I'm in the top 100. So I'll get invited back to fish again. I'd really like another shot at it. I improved this year from 119th to 54th. Made a couple cuts. So would like to do it again but thanks again for watching and look for these you know kind of random videos i got coming and uh hope you like them later guys